So similar to the arithmetic sequences, or the ASs, with our GS, our geometric sequence, we'll have a formula. And this formula is going to tell us the value. Tn is always going to be our value, just like before. A is still the first term. R is our ratio, and N is the term number. So again, if you think about diagramming something out like this for yourself, the first term, second term, the third term, N is the counting or the placeholder, and T is the actual values. So for instance, one of the sequences that we had before, such as this one here, 5, 10, 20, 40, first term is 5, second term is 10, third term is 20, fourth term is 40. These are the T values, and N is just telling us which one in the sequence. So if you know A, and you know R, and you know N, and you can always find out what the value of that term will be. So for instance here, if we're looking to find the term for the required sequence, suppose we can look at this first example, they've given us A is equal to R 4, R is equal to 2, and they want us to find the seventh term. Well, the seventh term, that means that N is equal to 7. Right, we're looking for this one. Our first term is 4, and we're looking out to find what the seventh term is. That's what we want to know. And we know that between each of these, we're going to go times by 2. So 4, 8, 16. We could times by 2 the whole way out, or we can plug it into our formula here. And you can see that's 4 times 2 uh, to the power of 7 minus 1. Now, when you plug this into your calculator, same with that formula up here, I should probably write this. You're going to want to put in brackets around the n minus 1. So what they've plugged in to their calculator is 4 times 2, the little hat button there, bracket, 7 minus 1, bracket. Looks like this. So 4 times 2 to the power of bracket, 7 minus 1. And if you don't mind doing subtraction of 1, you could always write 4 times 2 to the power of 6 and not have to worry about those brackets if you just do the 7 minus 1 in your head. So again, because they're using the formula where they've got everything on one side of the equals plugged in, they don't have to use solver. They can just put it straight into their run menu and get their answer. So again, even if you've got an R value that is a decimal, still do the same thing. We're replacing the A times the R to the power of n minus 1, and here if it's the tenth term, my n is 10. So here, finding find the term for each of the required, um, for each sequence. So if I need to know what my r is, remember I can do the second term on top of the first term. r is equal to 4 over 1, or just equal to 4. And you might have seen that by seeing that they each times by 4. a is going to be equal to 1. The tenth term, that means n is equal to 10. So the tenth term, I can write with a little 10 there, but that's just the tenth term, is equal to a, my formula, tn is equal to a times r to the power of n minus 1. So 1 times 4 to the power of 10 minus 1. And in your calculator, you can plug this in as 1 times 4 to the power of, for me, I just think 10 minus 1 is 9, makes it easier, you don't need the brackets. So the tenth term is a really big number. And there you go. So for each of these, thinking about what's the n value, and plugging it in. If you're one of the students who's been deciding to use solver for absolutely everything, um, that's okay, it's your choice. But just keep in mind, just like before, you would start with x is equal to 1 times 4 to the power of bracket 10 minus 1 bracket and solve. And there's your answer again. Okay. So not too bad using the formula, just watch out for those brackets and remember you're going to use that little hat key to get to the power of something.